What's up YouTube, Jerry Lane here with Gnome Tech, bringing you my first ever What's on my iPhone video. Let's go. Currently I'm rocking the iPhone 6 Plus, no S, and I got a dbrand skin wrapped around it. I got the Wood Series skin right now. I'll drop links in the description below if you guys wanna pick one up for yourself or of anything else I talk about in the video. Along with the dbrand skin, I have this Moment lens plate. Moment's a great company that makes really awesome iPhone lenses that are premium quality glass. Currently I have a wide angle lens, a telephoto lens, and a macro lens as well. So a video review is coming out soon, so if you wanna see that, make sure to comment below. So usually I just rock my skin and that's the only protection I have besides my gold screen protector I have here as well which looks pretty fly on my gold iPhone I gotta say but sometimes when I want a little bit more protection I throw on this clear silicone case that I picked up from Best Buy it's kind of a $15 no-name brand clear case but I'll try to link that below for you guys as well now that we got the exterior covered let's jump right in and take a look at the apps on my phone so the biggest thing about my iPhone is I hate pages I want to keep everything simple just on one page. So I only have one single page with a bunch of different category folders. So let's just go from top to bottom on my one page of iPhone apps. The top four apps we'll talk about first are my camera app, my photos app. Those are pretty generic. I don't think I need to explain those. My clock app and my calendar app. I use the clock app on the daily as my alarm, as timers, etc. I have my calendar app. I always like having this calendar app right there because Without opening the app, I can see the date and the day of the week right away. It's just easy to have them there and have them at the ready. The next row down, we have my calculator app, the weather app, Google Maps, and the notes app. These are apps I use on the daily as well, and they're all self-explanatory. Up next, I have Google Chrome. It's my web browser app of choice. I use Chrome on all my devices, and it's easy to just have that handoff integration with Chrome. The next one is an interesting one. This one's called Parcel Track, and I actually really like this one. This is a new one that I discovered, and I use this basically to keep track of all the different products that companies are sending me. And as you can see, I'm getting a new microphone very soon from Sennheiser, so I'm super excited about that. But Parcel Track is just a free app where you can enter your tracking info, and it'll let you know when your product's in transit, or if it's delivered, or even if it's being rescheduled to deliver, or something like that but it's just a handy little app to use since I get packages on the daily. The next app is a new one that I found recently too, and I'm just gonna say now, none of these apps are sponsored. This is not a sponsored video, so these are just apps that I love and that I use. So Duolingo is a super fun, cool little app. Uh, I'm trying to pick up the Spanish that I learned in high school and hopefully improve on it a little bit more, but it basically just makes learning a language fun, and it's like a fun, simple version of Rosetta Stone, and it's free. So basically any language you want to learn, they have it in here and you can just go at your own pace and try to learn it. As some of you might know, my wife is an Asian, but she's going to try to start picking up Chinese as well and I'm going to try to freshen up on my Spanish. Next up is just the typical settings app and then my next row is where I get excited about. So my fourth row down right here is a row that I absolutely love and I use every single day now. So this is my smart home row. I have the Amazon Alexa app right here. I have the Zuli app, which is a smart plug. Best Smart Home Tech episode three or four, sneak peek that you guys just got right there. I have my LifeX app and I have my Playbulb X app. So these are all my smart home apps. So Alexa controls my Alexa dot and she also is able to control a lot of my smart lights that are in here. Zuli controls my two really awesome Edison bulbs that are on my wall and a few other things because I have quite a few of these smart plugs LifeX, pretty self-explanatory. I go into that only when I need to change colors, but I use my Amazon Dot now to control my light. So I don't really need the LifeX app that much anymore. And then the Playbulb X app is actually for my LED light strip. And of course, I'm hoping to add more smart home apps into my phone as soon as I keep updating my best smart home tech series. Whew. All right, so we're done with those main apps and now we're gonna get into my folders. So I got quite a few folders down here, but the first one is the photography folder. So in here, I keep my Instagram app and then all the different things that I use to edit my Instagram photos or the ones that I probably should use but get too lazy to do. So in my photography folder, I have the Instagram app, which I use every single day, but you guys don't need to see that. The next one up is Whiteagram, and this is what I use to add white borders to my pictures sometimes. I have the Viso app right here, which I should use way more often to edit my pictures, but I get a little lazy. You'll see a trend here. And then next up, I have the GoPro app, which a lot of you already know as well, but I don't use my GoPro as often as I should, which I might try to start doing more. 
And then next up there's Boomerang and Layout, and these are two Instagram apps. So one is for video and one is for different picture layouts if you wanna make your Instagram photos fancy. The next one is the Moment app, which I can use with my different Moment lenses or if you have a Moment case. But it's a nice little photography app that I should probably use more often as well. And you'll see that that's a pretty big trend on my phone. I have a lot of apps that I should use more often. The next one's kind of cool, it's called Polygen. Basically, it lets you create a poly-generated picture of an image that you already have. Ink Hunter, now this is an awesome app. I am the biggest fan of tattoos. One of my favorite shows is Ink Master. I don't have any tattoos of my own. My mother would probably kill me, but this is a super cool app. Basically, it lets you create a augmented reality tattoo on yourself. So you draw this weird little smiley face on your arm, you take a picture, and you can add an a tattoo and it looks super real. You can make it larger, you can make it smaller, you can give yourself a whole sleeve if you wanted to, but this is a really cool app that you guys should check out. The next one is Snapseed and Photo Blender. These are just more photo editing apps. You guys could check them out. These are ones that I found that are pretty cool. I just don't really use them that often. So the next folder I have is my social media folder. I have Facebook, Messenger, Twitter, Hangouts, Periscope. I have the Creator Studio, cause I'm a YouTuber. I have the Beam app which I heard they just updated, so I might give that another try because I didn't really use it that much. I have the BuzzFeed app, and I recently got a LinkedIn to try that out as well. I sometimes have Snapchat. I download it on and off. I don't really use it or understand it or like it. I don't know, I never got into Snapchat. Let me know in the comments below if you guys think I should pick up Snapchat again. But the main ones I use in this social folder are Facebook, Messenger, and Twitter. That's about it. I used to like Periscope a lot, but it the picture quality is terrible on Periscope. If they could make that a little bit better. I mean, I have a 1080p camera in here and I'm not really getting 1080p quality out of it. So if they improve the picture quality on Periscope, I might do it more often. But I really like the live interaction on Periscope. So check me out on Periscope. Okay, next up we have my videos folder and this houses Netflix, YouTube, FaceTime, Skype, Smart Glass for the Xbox One because I have an Xbox One voice memos, road record, and these two are in here because they're for video production. So I have the full road app since I have a Smart Log Plus. I have the Sony Play Memories app, which I don't use that often. I don't really like it. I don't think they did a very good job with that. Maybe if they update it, I'll use it more. I have Amazon Video because I have Prime. And last one is To Do Movies. This is actually a really cool one. So in To Do Movies, you can basically see what's coming out soon. Uh, you can see what's currently in theaters. You can star movies that you wanna see or whatever, and it'll remind you when movies are coming out or let you know of the latest trending movies, blah, blah, blah. It's a cool movie app. I watch movies literally every single day. Maybe not every single day, but I probably watch at least seven movies a week. So if you know any good movies, drop them in the comments below. We got a few more folders to get through. So next one is info. This is where I have all the apps that give me the information that I need when I'm looking for it. So I have the app store in here. I have my Chase banking app in here. I have Yelp, Starbucks, Fandango, Postmates. That's a fun one. I think Postmates is probably my favorite food app because they have the most options. TickTick is kind of like a little to-do list app. I have Uber, I have the Bible app. I have this Joy app, which is like a Spotify app where you can speak into it to say what you want to be played. I haven't tried it before, but it's a new one. I just downloaded it. I'm gonna give it a shot. We'll see. Spendy kind of helped me keep track of my expenses. This one is a new one too. It sounds cool. Maybe I'll try it out. I'm trying to be responsible, guys. Next up is Venmo. I've never used it before, but I know every single person in this world uses it. So I'm gonna try it out for banking and for transferring money or sending money, whatever. And next up is a iHandy bubble level. This is just pretty simple. I build a lot of stuff surprisingly, and I am collecting new tools, and this is kind of a cool little app to have. Next one is the wallet app. I got PayPal, I have Lyft if I don't wanna use Uber, cause Lyft sends me a lot of coupons actually. I have the Apple Store app for when I wanna try to get the latest Apple products. I have Prime Now, which I have yet to try, but I've heard good things from it. I have Shazam if I can't figure out what a song is. I have the, this register one is from Square. I have one of those little Square readers, so I don't know. I usually sell stuff online or just get cash if I sell to people on Craigslist. So that's a cool little app to have and a cool little device to have. Next up, Safari. Like I said, I use Chrome, so I don't really use Safari. I have the AdSense app since, again, I'm a YouTuber. I have Pocket. This is a new one. I'm gonna give it a shot, but this one sounds kind of cool too. It basically lets me 
take whatever videos or websites I see online that I think are cool, but maybe I don't have time to read them or watch them right now. I could put them into this app and I could watch them later. I have order up just cause I got a coupon for it, but it definitely does not have as many restaurants as Postmates. And I have a Yogurt Land app and a Yelp Eat24 app. So this is just a bunch of information, apps that give me this information that I'm looking for on a daily basis. And that's where all those apps go. The next folder is my Get Fit folder. Granted, I should use this way, way more, but these are just a few series of apps that I found that are actually really good for exercising. So if you're looking for some good exercise apps, here you go. The first one is RunKeeper, which I use whenever I go on a run. The next few are a series of apps from the same maker, I believe, but one is Instant Abs, Instant Shoulders, Instant Legs, Instant Arms, Instant Back, Chest Trainer, and those are just really simple apps that I really like because they're focused on a specific purpose and whatever you're looking to work out that day, just go into that app. Next app, we have Workout Plan. That'll just help you create a plan to help you make sure you stay healthy. Fitness Buddy, similar thing. And the last one is the Stock Health app. All right, getting into games. Now this is where I get addicted. Currently, Cubed, right here in the corner, is my number one game and I highly recommend it. Or maybe I highly don't because I play this every single day, all throughout the day. So basically the point is to try to fit all these little Tetris pieces on your board without dying. And as you can see, my high score is 21,933 and that is without any of the power ups. So that's just straight up balling. Try to beat my score. Show me a screenshot if you can without using the power ups. 21,000, uh, proud of that. All right, next up, I absolutely love Catan. I don't like when people say Catan, but I don't know the correct pronunciation, but I say Catan. So the Settlers app is actually pretty good. Wordament is a really fun game, actually. I remember that this first came out on Windows phones and I didn't have a Windows phone and they didn't have this app on iOS. And I literally almost got a Windows phone for my next phone just to play this game, but it's a cool game. I'm not gonna go into detail about it. Wordament, download it. Spring Ninja is another fun one, Mr. Jump, similar game, Fruit Ninja, typical, Pocket Tanks is a fun one. Blockus is one of my favorite board games ever and they created an app version of it, which is super awesome. And you'll notice that a ton of my games are actually board games. I don't know if I have them all here, but I have Monopoly, I have The Game of Life, I have Catan, I have Blockus, etc. Most if not all my games are free because I just don't really believe in paying for game apps. The next one is Smashy Road, that's a fun little driving game. We got Tiny Wings, Need for Speed, Madden. That's a great one, I got super addicted on that. Bang, oh, Bang is one of my favorite card games. You guys should check that one out. Flappy Bird, of course. I remember when iPhones were selling for thousands of dollars just because they had Flappy Bird downloaded on them. That was crazy. Rope and Fly 2, that's a pretty sweet one. And Clash Royal, just downloaded that. I wanna try that out. I used to love Clash of Clans, got sick of it, got annoyed from people attacking me every single freaking day. But Clash Royale, I'm gonna check that out. All right, so my next folder is all about school. So I am currently in grad school, not undergrad. So I got a ton of different apps that I use on the daily for school. One is NGSS, I'm trying to become a teacher. So those are the national science standards that I gotta follow. The next one, I go to UC San Diego, if you didn't know. So that is a helpful app if I ever need to check bus times, whatever. Substitute alert, sometimes I work as a substitute in the district. I have Google Slides, Docs, Drive. I have Blackboard, which is an app where I can check my grades and stuff. OneDrive, always useful. I currently have, I think, one terabyte of storage online on OneDrive and I got all that for free. If you wanna know how, comment below. Next up, I have Printer Pro if I ever need to print something from my phone and I have a scanner app. Last up is my Apple folder of uselessness. These are all apps that I can't delete and I put them in my useless folder. I know of a hack where I can hide this and it doesn't require you to jailbreak your phone, but I just, whatever, it's in a folder. And I'm considering jailbreaking my phone so I can add some cool stuff. When I used to have a Galaxy Note, I jailbroke that and I absolutely loved it. I don't know why I haven't done it to this phone yet, but if you guys have any suggestions or you think I should jailbreak my phone, leave a thumbs up, comment below, let me know what I should do, if I should download Cydia, or if you guys know of any other jailbreak hacks, apps, or tweaks, leave them in the comment below. Okay, last but not least is my most used apps row right there at the bottom. I have my phone app, 
I have Spotify, I have premium and I use it every single day, I love it. I have the texting iMessages app and my email app of choice is Cloud Magic because I think I might have four or five different email accounts and I'm able to get to them all from this one app. You'll see that on the sides, they're all color coded. So I have one blue one, one red one, Another email account I don't get that many emails from is this green one right here. So it's really sweet. It keeps everything super nice and organized. I can just check out my unread ones. I can go to my different email accounts and Cloud Magic is free on iOS, but when you try to download it for OS X on my iMac or on my MacBook or something like that, you have to pay like 10 bucks or something for the app. And you guys know I don't like paying for apps. So Cloud Magic is a great app for your phone. Check that out. Again, most of my apps are free and if they're paid for, I would have told you like the Rode Record app, I did have to pay for the full version. But hopefully you like some of the apps on my phone and you're gonna try them out for yourself. This is my first what's on my iPhone video ever. If you have any suggestions of how I can make it better or more interesting in the future, leave them in the comments below. I'd love to improve and I read every single comment and I try to respond to every single one as well except for hateful comments, I hate those. So be nice, thanks so much for watching. My name is Jerry Land with Nova Tech, and as we always say, to the next one and beyond.